Hey everybody, and welcome to the Stitching Between Pages podcast. I'm Robin. You can find me on Ravelry as half past 92 and on Instagram as Medieval Listing. Um, today, I'm filming on December 14th, 2018, um, but I think I'm going to upload this on, today's Friday, I think I'm going to upload this on Sunday the 16th of December, um, just to, just because. <laughs> um, so anyways, this is exciting. I'm coming to you from Germany. Yay! Um, I've been here for about three months now, which is is crazy. Um, and it's been really wonderful so far. Um, finding lots of good things in the archives, meeting lots of people, um, just enjoying living abroad again. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure I've mentioned this on the podcast before. Um, I've lived in England for two years. Um, so this is, is not my first experience living abroad for a year, um, but it is the first in a country where I don't speak the language fluently, um, although my German is slowly getting better. Um, but don't worry, <laughs> the podcast is not suddenly going to become um, bilingual. I, I will keep, continue to film in English. Um, so anyways, yeah, um, it's been, let's see, the last time I filmed was at the beginning of September, just before I left. Um, it was really funny. Um, after I filmed, my dad and I went to run some errands. I think we had to go to the post office and um, the storage unit where all of my things are, um, all of all of my furniture and stuff, books, all of my stash um, is all in storage in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan where my parents live. Um, anyways, dad and I went to run some errands and he said to me, why did you put on lipstick for running errands? I said, dad, I didn't put on lipstick for errands. I put it on because I was filming a podcast. Um, so anyways, the lipstick I'm wearing today, if anybody's curious, is, um, a German brand, Art Deco. I really like it. So that's exciting. I don't usually talk about makeup on the podcast. This is not a makeup podcast. I am not really a makeup wearer, although I've come to enjoy lipstick in the past couple of years. Anyways, let's talk about some knitting because I have a lot to talk about. Um, and the first thing, I guess we should just dive right. Oh, I didn't even realize my mug matches the buttons. Um, this is, I don't think I, I, I think I talked about this on the last episode, but I don't think I'd started it yet. I cast it on just before I left, just so that I didn't have to, you know, I always find casting things on like the, the getting started is always the hardest part for me um and or well getting started and then finishing um everything in the middle tends to flow pretty seamlessly but um sometimes the actual casting on and getting started is um a, a hurdle that i have to get have to get over so i cast it on just before i left so you have not seen this and it's finished um i did talk about it though i might have talked about it twice because I bought the yarn, got the yarn um, last summer, summer 2017, um, just after I got back from a trip to France and the UK. Um, sorry, my hair was doing something strange. Anyways, this is the Lorna Suzanne cardigan. Um, it's a pattern by, oh, I have the pattern over here. Hang on. It is a pattern by um, Ellen Mason. So it's a little bit the worse for wear. I carried it around, it's been folded, uh, but you can see it's a paid for pattern on Ravelry and it's been in my, um, I guess in my queue, um, although I don't really use my queue for anything useful. Um, it does not, I, I'm sure I haven't queued anything on Ravelry in years. And it, the queue bears no relation to what I'm knitting or what I plan to knit. Um, I tend to put things in favorites now. Um, and sometimes I just choose things that, to knit that aren't even in, in my favorites. Um, so anyways, this has been on my two knit list probably almost since I started knitting again. Um, and I finally knit it. And I really, really, I'm really happy with it. Um, so it's a cardigan with this really, really pretty lace. I tried to, I wore something light so that hopefully you can kind of see the lace pattern. Um, it's kind of leafy or floral, um, really vintage feeling. 
there's just a simple um, all of the all of the borders are garter stitch so garter stitch here garter stitch on the sleeves there's um, the this pattern is kind of reflected on if I can turn my arm the right way is reflected on the sleeve um, as well I don't know if you can tell it's really difficult I think I posted one photo of this on Ravelry of the sleeve in progress um, it's, it's knit in um, I have I have a whole extra skein I have almost two skeins left over actually um, but it's just a knit picks wool of the Andes um, in the cobblestone Heather colorway um, so not fancy yarn um, very affordable but it's it's really nice um, it's a nice sort of everyday wearable yarn um, that I think I think will wear really well it's non superwash um, although there is a here you can I'll show you the other side of the label um, there I believe there is a superwash version of um, of knit picks wool of the Andes but I prefer non-superwash for sweaters. I um, have had trouble with superwash yarn like really stretching out um, once it's been knit. And that just seems like a bad thing for sweaters. Um, so then it has, the, I think the collar is what drew me to the pattern. It just makes it feel really vintage. Um, and again, oh, the sort of lacy berry pattern is is repeated on the on the collar um, and then the you might remember from the picture that i just showed you uh, on the pattern that the pattern has just four buttons down the front but i decided to have buttons going down the whole front of the cardigan um, so i have six buttons um, the buttons are just plain blue they're plastic they're nothing fancy um, from a german they're a chain, I think, a chain yarn store, um, Vola Rudel. And I thought the little bag was so cute. Look at, look at all the little people knitting. And the cat, um, cats, I see at least two, three. Um, anyways, I thought the bag was really cute, so I thought I would show it to you. And I did get two spare buttons, um, so that's exciting. In case I lose any, uh, hopefully I don't. Um, so yeah, I decided that I would be wearing it closed anyways, and it would just be more practical for me if it buttoned the whole way down the front instead of just part way. Um, so let's see, what else can I tell you about this? Oh, the pattern recommends, and this is something I've never done before, that you sew a small plain button. So I have some extras who really exciting. They're just plain shirt buttons, nothing, nothing fancy. Um, on the inside, let's see if I can show you, on the inside of the button for stability. So there's, on the inside, it doesn't do anything, it's just stabilizing this button. And I thought, hmm, I don't know, will that really make a difference? It made a huge difference. I'm going to do this on every cardigan with buttons ever. Um, oops, that's the, <laughs> the buttonhole side. Um, it, the buttons are, they, they're not going anywhere. They're not floppy. They're not, I, it's amazing. So if you don't know about this trick, which I did not, but I think other people do. Um, so if you don't know about this trick, I highly recommend it. Um, just get yourself a stash of plain buttons and sew them on the insides. Um, both the blue buttons and the little white buttons are um, they have just two holes and so I just sew them at the same time I'm just going through up through one button and just I sewed them at the same time um, and I yeah it's this is the first time I've worn this cardigan um, I've, I've just had it on around the house today I'm working from home um, the archive that I that I'm working in is closed on Fridays um, which means that I can film during the day um, which is, is is great for you guys um anyway so i've just been wearing it around the house this morning um but yeah i i really really recommend it um the one thing i struggled with i knit the collar so it's knit the cardigan is knit from the bottom up um, in one piece and then you knit the sleeves and add them on and then it do the um the decreases for the sleeves um and then you bind it off pick up stitches and knit the collar and then you pick up stitches for the and knit the button bands. 
um, and I knit the collar and the button bands twice. The first time I knit the collar, it was not straight. It did not, it sat really askew on one side and it was clear that um, it wasn't even. It just didn't, it didn't look right. Um, so I knit, I knit it, I blocked it. And then I sort of sat with it for a, a few days and thought to myself, no, I, I just can't live with it. I just can't live with it being askew like that. Um, so the second time I was more careful to pick up stitches evenly, to pick up the same number of stitches in sort of each quadrant, the kind of the front to the shoulder, back and the other back, and then the other, um, other front of the collar, um, which I'm kind of of two minds. I feel like maybe I should have thought of that and been more careful and counted more carefully. But also maybe the pattern should have suggested that you pick up the stitches evenly ac across the four quadrants. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe that was just just my own um, me not thinking. But I I also think the pattern should have suggested that. Um, although I would I would recommend the pattern. Um, if you go on Ravelry, there's not a ton of projects. I think there's about 130 or so. Um, but it looks really good on a lot of people. Um, and I just, I really like the vintage shape and the vintage sort of sensibility that it has about, it feels like the 1940s to me. Um, and I really love it. So that's that. I'm really, really happy with this cardigan. Um, I knit the smallest size. I knit it on, um, I knit it on a US six and seven, um, which I think might be a size smaller than the, um, the needles that the designer Ellen Mason used to get gauge. Um, but that's what I needed to get gauged, so that's what I used. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to tell you about this. It's been a while. I finished it at the beginning of November. Well, I finished the first iteration at the beginning of November, and then it took me a while to decide to rip out and re-knit the button band and the collar. And then, I will admit, <laughs> I just finished weaving in the ends last night and sewed on the buttons at about 10.30 p.m last night. So it's not like I have been, you know, it's been sitting finished and waiting to be worn um, until I until I podcasted it. I finished it last night. Um, the knitting has been finished for about a month. The finishing. See, casting on and finishing just sometimes linger for me. Um, I guess I can tell you about my tea. Um, just a plain blue mug. I miss my own things. Um, I, yeah, I miss my mugs and I miss my books. This is a really blank background. Um, sorry, I can't do any better. <laughs> um, this is this is what it is. Um, I really like. I'm living in a house with a few other people. Um, none of my housemates are here right now. So another again, a good time to film. Um, and it's, it's perfect for what I need. Um, I needed obviously something furnished. Um, but yeah, I, I miss my own, my mugs and my books and my cats. My cats are with my parents. Um, so they are well taken care of, probably being completely spoiled. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, I, I do miss, I do miss those things. Anyways, the tea that I'm drinking is loose leaf tea um, from Palais de Thé. Um, which is a French tea company. It's number 25, um, which is a Christmas blend. Um, it has, let's see, citrus, rose, almond, and spices. Um, and it's a, it's a loose leaf tea. Um, so I brewed a whole pot. And I bought this tea um, last month at the beginning of November. Um, I went to, if you follow me on Instagram, you will know, um, I went to Strasbourg in France for a couple of days, um, and so to all my French viewers, um, and and you know if, if anybody hasn't seen the news, um, the Christmas market at Strasbourg um, on Tuesday I think um, suffered a, a terrorist attack. There's a couple of people dead. Um, I'm not sure if they've caught the gunman yet. Um, anyways, so to all my French viewers, I'm thinking of you. Um, and it's it's a really a beautiful city, and what a what a terrible thing to have happen, um, so close to Christmas. So, anyways, I'm sorry sorry to bring the mood down, but I felt like I couldn't I couldn't mention um, Strasbourg and my visit there and not um, not acknowledge the the recent 
terrible events. Um, anyways, the tea is lovely. Um, sometimes black teas that are, or teas in general that are, you know, supposed to have sort of scents and, and tastes that are not just tea uh, can be underwhelming, but this one is really nice. So definitely I can taste the citrus and the almond and the spices and it smells so good. It's very Christmassy. Um, Although I think you could drink it happily all winter, and I think I will be. Um, it's really, really nice. Anyways, um, more about, well, a little bit more about Strasbourg in a bit. There's so much that has happened in the past three months. Um, I've been um, I've been to quite a few places. Um, I, I could talk about my work, but this is a knitting podcast, and uh, I'm going to focus on the knitting because I really do have a lot. Um, so without further ado, let me talk about two more finished, wait, three more finished. This might be the most finished objects I have ever had on a podcast, ever. Um, I'd have to go back and check that. 42 episodes, I don't remember, um, obviously, every episode what has been finished. Um, but it's definitely, it must be up there. So the other three finished objects I have are socks. Um, and you will see a theme. Everything I have to talk about is sweaters and socks. Um, and that's because I decided that that way I'd have a big project to be working on and something smaller and portable. Um, and I really, I thought that it would be sort of without access to my stash, without access to all of my kind of single skeins and things that could be turned into shawls or hats, um, accessories. I'm buying yarn with a purpose. Um, and so I can buy a whole sweater quantity right now and knit a sweater and it's a lot of knitting and it, it sort of takes a lot of time. Um, but because I'm not knitting seven other things, it's actually, it actually goes a little bit quicker. I knit this, this sweater, for example, in, in two months. Um, so anyways, socks and sweaters is, is the theme of this episode, which is, and it's also good because I hadn't felt like knitting socks for a long time. Um, but I, okay. I didn't pack any hand knit socks. I meant to. I did. I really did. Um, and I forgot. In the frenzy of packing two suitcases for 10 months and trying to think of sort of, you know, what clothes I could bring that would give me the most um, flexibility with, with my wardrobe um, and sort of what shoes I wanted to bring and what shoes I would need, be most likely to need. Um, I forgot to pack any hand knit socks. Um, I keep my, at home, I keep my hand knit socks and my sort of commercial cotton socks separate, um, just for my own organizational reasons. Um, so I, I forgot, which is terrible, um, partially because I've been really down on my, I, I packed commercial cotton socks. And I hate them. They're not, oh, they're not, it's cold outside. They slip down all the time. Um, I have, and I have, I have two pairs, I think, of commercial socks that have wool in them. And they're so much better. They're so much better. This is not a, re a revelation to anybody. Um, it shouldn't be a revelation to me. Wool socks are better in the winter. They're warmer. They fit better. Um, they're cozier. It's cold outside. You want something warm on your feet. Like this is, this is not a surprise. We all know this. So it's a good thing my sock knitting mojo is back. And part of the reason I'm filming today is because this is pretty much the only chance I'm going to have this month. Um, I can film on the weekends basically, um, during when it's, it's light outside. So there's, there's light, um, so you can see me. Um, and last weekend I was, I went to Trier, um, which is, um, on the Moselle river on the, in the West, on the West border of Germany. Um, I haven't posted any photos yet. So if, um, if you're watching this soon after I post it, you might hear about it from the podcast rather than I will post photos on Instagram. Um, for those of you who don't know about Trier, um, it's home to the best preserved Roman ruins north of the Alps. Um, it was for a while um, capital, part of the Western Roman Empire after Diocletian divided the empire in two. Um, it was kind of the second tier capital um, of the, the Western Roman Empire. So there's a beautiful city gate 
um, the Porta Negra, which survived because it was turned into a church in the Middle Ages. Um, there's an amphitheater, there's a bunch of Roman bath ruins. Um, the cathedral is uh, was started in the fourth century, so it's the oldest Christian church in Germany. Um, it's Romanesque, it's cavernous, it's huge, um, and it's beautiful, It's and it's really cool. You can see, easily see, um, sort of the progression of styles from um, sort of fourth century to Baroque. Um, there's, there were some Baroque additions. Um, there's also a basilica, um, which is now a Lutheran church, but was used as an audience chamber uh, by the, the Romans which is another fast space. I think, I think it's the largest um, intact Roman space, although it's, it's been rebuilt in parts. Part of it was um, suffered during um, World War II from, from bombing, like much of Germany. Um, and that's, another, it was, that's, that's a, cool, a cool space. I think, I think it's the largest intact enclosed Roman space outside of Rome. Um, so anyways, that was a wonderful weekend. Um, and then now this weekend is sort of 14th, 15th, 16th. And then next weekend is practically Christmas. Um, and I am off to the UK to visit a bunch of my friends, um, to be with them for Christmas and New Year's, which means I won't have time to film. Um, hopefully there will be a lot of time for knitting and I will talk a little bit about my future knitting plans, which involve Christmas knitting, or Christmas time knitting plans. I did absolutely no Christmas knitting this year for gifts. Um, anyways, blathering on, um, at least you get to hear a little bit about what, I, what I've been up to. Um, I finished, the first pair of socks I finished, oh, I didn't grab the yarn, mm, or the, um, the ball band. Oh dear, I'm not going to be able to tell you anything about these besides the showing them to you and telling you about the pattern. These are two socks. The Drippity Drop socks, or Drippity Drop pattern by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears podcast. Um, so there is a pattern. The socks, the yarn is, is pretty busy, so it, it doesn't, you can see that there's a texture, but it doesn't show up super, super clearly. Oh, there we go. Hey, it focused. Good job, camera. Um, so, I don't know, it's a sock. <laughs> um, I used the Eye of Partridge heel in, that's in the pattern and the Umbrella toe, which has decreases at, I think, eight points around the toe, um, which seems like it's going to fit really well. It's more rounded than your standard sort of wedge toe. And here you can see the stripe pattern without, um, without the stitch pattern on the foot. Um, so anyways, the, the yarn is, oh, it's not going to come to me. Nope. I think the colorway is called Paris. I bought it at a yarn shop that was near my old Chicago apartment for the first year that I lived there. Um, and then they, they closed sadly. Um, Although actually I didn't go there that much. It was kind of, it was not my favorite yarn shopping experience, but I bought this, this yarn um, at a pretty good discount when they were, when they were closing. I think the colorway is called Paris and it is, oh, it's got alpaca and nylon. Oh, I can picture the label, but I can't, I can't see the name. Anyways, I will post it. Um, I'll make a thread for this episode on Ravelry and I will post the name of the yarn there. Um, sorry about that. I think I think this, I knew I was going to forget something. <laughs> so this is, this is what I forgot. Um, so I haven't worn them yet because I wanted to show them to you before I wore them. Um, and I'm going to start wearing them immediately, like possibly the second I turn off the camera. Um, yep. Um, I knit the medium size with 64 stitches on my standard two and a half millimeter, which I think is a one and a half. Um, and I knit them on the, oh, I think I showed these to you last episode. I think you've seen a sock in progress. 
Um, so maybe you will know the yarn that I used. I don't. Um, I knit them on the Addy, um, oh dear, terrible. Can't remember what they're called. Um, I'll show them to you soon. They have a, another sock project on them. Um, anyways, socks, pair number one. Pair number two is just a plain pair, um, but a fun yarn. Um, sort of green and pink and purple and gray, which are some of my favorite colors. Um, you can see that I made no effort to make them match perfectly. I don't find that necessary for stripy socks. Um, I used the same heel from um, the Drippity Drop socks. I think I've decided I'm a heel flap and gusset kind of person. I prefer the experience of knitting them more, um, and I, they, I think they fit me better. Um, I think they look nicer, um, and I don't mind picking up, there's so, so few stitches to pick up, I mean, 18 stitches, 16 stitches, um, to pick up along the, once you've knit the, the heel flap to get ready to do the gusset decreases. Um, I think, I think I've landed on that, and I once again did the umbrella toe because I had the drippity drop pattern in um, the project bag I was using, and so I just decided to go for it again. This yarn, I did bring the tag, um, is Superba Geyser 4-ply Superwash. Do, do, do. Um, it's a Rico Design yarn. It is color, this is really exciting, color number two. <laughs> um, and you can see the other, other colors. Ooh, can you? Anyways, I don't think it's gonna focus. That's okay. Um, it's color number two. Um, and I have, as always, I have tiny feet. Um, I wear a, a six and a half US women's shoe. So I have plenty left over, um, probably 40, 40 grams at least. Um, so this is what it, what it looked like in the skein. I just love sort of this acid green and the pinks and purples and grays. I, it's a really it's a color combination that makes me really happy. Um, so these, these I knit really quickly. Um, I started them, I just, I knit these on just plain bamboo DPNs because I started them, these are two and a half millimeter as well. Um, nothing, these needles are nothing special. <laughs> um, and I, I knit them on these needles because I cast them on to take with me on a trip to the UK. I went to the UK at the end of November. Um, so basically, I was there three weeks ago, and I'll be there again next week to visit a friend of mine, who I will see again at Christmas, who had a baby, Eddie is now six months old. Um, I wanted to have something portable with me. I was flying just with a carry-on, um, and I thought it would be safer um, to use bamboo needles rather than metal. Um, interestingly, although the TSA, America's Transportation Security Administration, Association, I think it's administration, TSA, TSA guidelines say that knitting is permitted in carry-ons. So I've never felt any qualms about taking metal needles in carry-ons when I fly, when my flight starts in the US. But, European air security um, rules are different. They don't say anything about knitting. There's a whole page on the TSA website about knitting. Um, nothing like that exists in Europe. It's sharp objects that are not permitted. So I decided these, which are not sharp at all, um, would be safer than my um, much more expensive metal sock needles. Um, and I had no problems. So in case you were curious, that is a little tidbit of information for you. Um, I cast the first sock on just before I left so that it was on the go um, while I was there. I finished the whole first sock when I was there. Um, I was there for two full days. I flew on Friday, flew back on Monday. And I was well underway on the second sock. Um, I think I was sort of here on the second sock. And then last weekend on the train to Trier, it's about a four hour train journey from Freiburg to, to Trier. Um, so a pleasant long journey um, 
I do, I, I like train travel, um, I will admit, even when the trains are crowded, which sometimes they are. Um, I finished the sock, I kitchenered the toe. Um, when I got home, I hadn't taken a tapestry needle with me. But other than that, I finished the rest of the sock last weekend. So yay, another finished pair of socks that I can now wear. <laughs> Happily, cozy feet, I'm so excited, can't wait. Um, so that's that. And the final finished object I have to show you, which is also a pair of socks. These are the cutest. They're so cute. Look at these tiny baby socks. Sorry, I don't know what my voice just did there. That was horrifying. Let's pretend that never happened. And I don't ever edit these, so it's going to be out there forever. I got really excited about tiny baby socks. Um, tiny baby socks. So these are from Mina Phillip of The Knitting Expat. She has a, I think it's called Baby and Toddler Sock Recipe, um, which is a paid for download, it's, but it's very, it's not very expensive, um, and suggests how many to cast on, um, how long to knit for, for a variety, I think from sort of newborn to two years maybe. So a pretty good size range. These are the six to 12 month size. Uh, my friend saw me knitting my own socks, said, these are really great. Would you knit some for Eddie for Christmas? I said, let me think about it. I've already been thinking about it. Um, so I came home and bought some yarn, cast on. These things are super quick. Um, and yep, so I have, I have a whole pair. Um, I used for these the German short row heel instructions that are in the pattern, uh, partially because I wanted, I'd never done, I've done short rows many, many times, um, but I had never done German short rows before and decided that it would be a good chance to learn the technique. Um, and while German short rows are super easy, don't love a short row heel. I just... I don't know. I've I've decided. I've I've come down on the side of heel flap and gusset, um, and it's just a plain wedge toe. Um, yep. So I knit I knit a whole pair. Um, each sock took me an evening, maybe. Um, like I said, super super quick. I just put something on Netflix um, and knit away. Again, I made no effort to match the socks, um, and the yarn is. Did I grab the label? Yes, I did. Uh, Regia, <clears throat> good German sock yarn. Uh, City Streets color for apply. Um, and you can see there what it would look like if I knit up a full size sock, which I think I actually will. Um, I, I will. These will be a pair of socks for me. I'm going to knit a pair of socks for myself from this yarn. Um, Anyways, there we go. You all know about Regia. Um, it's color 2896. <laughs> Such an exciting name. Couldn't have named it after a city. No, no. 2896. So, baby sock number one. Currently on my needles. Here's what the yarn looks like in the, in the skein. Um, it's maroons and grays and whites, um, nice autumn colors, winter colors. Here's another sock, and I just started. There's, I, I cast it on so once I finished the other one so that I would have it on the go. Um, here is, is sock number two, and these are the sock needles that I was talking about that I knit the drippity drop socks on. Um, they are Addies, um, and there's so there's you get a set of three. I think I saw on Instagram the other day. I think Haya Haya might be making very similar needles um, with their sharp tips, which would be amazing because, as I mentioned, I know I talked about this last time. My only complaint about these, they're great. They're like the best possible combination of DPNs, which I have generally preferred in the past, and um, Magic Loop which I have also used to knit socks, um, but just I, I never really got used to having that whole loop of cable just hanging out over here while you knitted. 
um, but you have to, you know, you change needles fewer times. I, when I knit socks on DPNs, I use four to hold the stitches and knit with the fifth. Um, so you're sort of changing needles many times in a single round. My only complaint about these is that you can see the tip in the middle is much sharper. Um, so each, obviously each um, needle has two tips. One is blunter and the other is sharper. I don't know why that is. Um, it seems silly to me. Uh, I don't know why you wouldn't just sell a sharp set and a less sharp set. It doesn't, it, 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 I don't understand the logic behind it. Um, because I would, I would much rather prefer the sharper tip to the less sharp tip. I think Haya Haya is making a set with their sharps. Um, and I, I love Haya Haya sharps. So I know some people don't, I know they are really sharp and some people do not like that. Some people prefer the less sharp tip, which is fine. And sometimes a less sharp needle tip works better for some things. Uh, but for socks, I do prefer a good sharp. I find it, it makes my process go quicker. So anyways, I actually, I will now confess. I knit two socks. This was one of the first two socks I knit. And then I knit one from the other pair. Then I put them next to each other and I realized that they were slightly different sizes. Um, I thought I had counted my rows carefully, but clearly had not. Um, the foot on one was maybe a quarter of an inch longer than the other one. So I'd already planned to knit multiple pairs of, um, of baby socks, but I, I knit sort of one from each pair and then now I'm going back and being much more careful with counting my rows. Um, so these also have, um, the second pair also has German short row heel because I knit two socks from what will be two different pairs um, first. So there will be four baby socks in the same, same color yarn um, with the German short row heel. And they're not, they should fit about the same, um, but I just couldn't live with the, um, the discrepancy in the length of the foot. So did I say these are the six to 12 month, six to 12 month size. Um, Eddie, the little baby who I'm giving them to will be seven months old just before Christmas. So hopefully they fit and will fit for a long time or a long-ish time. Um, babies grow very quickly. So anyways, that's that, baby socks. My other work in progress, I have no adult size socks in progress. My other work in progress is a sweater. So back to back to the sweaters. Um, this is for me and it is the tender sweater or tender jumper by Melody Hoffman um, who has the Bee Mandarins podcast. I think she's still podcasting. I'm not actually sure. Um, I've watched some of her episodes but um, have not in a while. So this, you might already know the pattern. Um, it's a bottom-up pullover with this lovely chevron texture. It's, it's just knits and pearls um, texture and then on the bottom and then you knit plain for a while. Um, I think another 10 centimeters, which in my mind when I started, um, when I finished the chevrons and started just knitting, I thought, oh, two inches, that's not very much. 10 centimeters is not two inches. 10 centimeters is closer to four inches. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. Um, I did a little bit this morning, probably do some more this evening, although I have to do some actual work. Um, so yep, it's, it's well underway. It's super, super squishy. Um, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to wearing this actually. I think it'll be a really practical, um, practical, but also pretty winter sweater. Um, I'll hold it a little bit closer. That's actually pretty good. I was not sure how the color was going to show up. Um, it is not gray, although it kind of, it does look a little bit gray. Um, it's actually lavender purple, um, but a grayish lavender purple. So here it is. Where's the ball? Um, don't worry, I have many, many skeins left. Um, the yarn is another Rico Designs. 
um, Linnea botanica, which is dyed with plants. Um, it does a commercial yarn, uh, but it's dyed with plants. This is color number five. <sighs> come on, hire somebody to come up with an actual color. Um, so that comes in 50 gram hanks. Uh, uh, doo -doo -doo. I have plenty. Um, I bought it on sale actually, which was great. Um, yeah, so it's a really pretty lavender. If I hold it, there you go. You can tell that it's not gray now, right? Against the gray that I'm wearing, you can tell that it is purple. Um, in different lights, it does look, in sort of dim light, it looks gray, um, but it's not. It's, it's definitely lavender. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really enjoying this. But I think the most exciting thing that I have to tell you about this, I finally bought interchangeable needles. Um, so they're just, um, they're just Knit Pro Novas. Just Knit Pro Novas. They are Knit Pro Novas. Um, I love them. I'm so excited. I'm so glad I finally bit the bullet and bought interchangeable needles. I have always been sort of skeptical um you know you hear people talking about how the joints come loose etc cetera, etc cetera. so far i haven't had any problems um knock on wood i've knit this i bought i bought the interchangeable needles to knit this sweater and again it's practical um it means that here i'll show you the whole the whole set um it means that i have sort of many options for all of the sweater knitting that I plan to do um, while I'm here. So I bought I bought a set. I forget what. Um, obviously, it goes from sort of this. These are the smallest tips that I have. These are obviously the largest. Um, I can't imagine that I will use these for much. Um, and then I have I think four four cables. Obviously, the one that I'm using and another one that's the same length, a longer one and a shorter one. Um, so yeah, great investment. I'm very, very happy with it so far, happy with them so far. Um, and as a practical um, practicality right now, I'm really, really pleased with them. Pour myself some more tea. I made a whole pot. Um, loose leaf tea, I feel like it makes more sense to make a pot um, than just one one mug. So that I think is it for my works in progress. Um, I don't have. I did not print out the pattern for this. Um, it's just there's no waist shaping. It's intended to be oversized. I think I'm knitting again the smallest size, but possibly the second smallest size. I don't remember, and possibly I should figure it out because soon I will have to do, um, obviously you separate for the front and the back and knit sleeves. And at some point I'm going to need to be sure which size I'm knitting um, for, for those reasons. But right so far it's just been the chevrons and stockinette, no shaping. It's intended to be an oversized, um, loose fitting, loose fitting sweater. Um, yeah, so that's, that's that. And I think that is it for works in progress. So let me talk a little bit about what I have planned. Um, I was hoping that the yarn I ordered for my next sweater, because I couldn't resist, um, I've really been wanting to knit a color work yoke. So I ordered yarn for um, the Winter Sol by Jennifer Steingast, which is a pattern which many of you probably know. It's got a beautiful color work yoke. Um, and I think the color work is repeated on the hems on the hem, or it's reflected on the hem, not repeated, and possibly also the sleeve cuffs. I don't remember. Um, anyways, it's a beautiful, beautiful color work pattern. And I ordered some um, De Rerum Natura Juliet, which is their worsted weight yarn, which I had never, I'd heard all about and sort of heard how wonderful it is but had never until very recently had the chance to actually sort of squish it in my hands. And I'm so excited. I knew as soon as I squished it that I needed a 
a whole sweater out of it for myself. Um, so that combined with the, my desire to knit a colorwork yoke, um, Vintersol, but my yarn has not yet arrived. I think it'll get here tomorrow. Not that there's any hurry. I still have a lot of work to do on tender first, but I do think I'm going to take um, Vintersol with me at Christmas. I think it'll be a perfect, um, can I knit the whole thing in two weeks? I don't think I can. That is probably over ambitious for me. I'm not that quick a knitter. Um, my other plans include probably a pair of socks for me out of this. A Christmas, I think I'm going to cast on a pair of socks on Christmas Eve, which is something I have not done for a while. That's a tradition that I believe Danny of the Little Bobbins podcast started several years ago. Um, I cast on a Christmas pair of our Christmas Eve pair of socks, maybe the first year that she did it, um, which would have been four years ago now, I think. Um, did not the past two years, but I'm going to again this year. Uh, not with Christmas yarn, but with this. This is Stray Cat Socks self-striping yarn from New Zealand in the mod colorway. And this was, I don't actually, I meant to look, I don't actually know if Stray Cat Socks is still dyeing yarn. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, she may not be, and if um, if she isn't, I'm really sorry for tempting all of you by showing this to you. This is or was a gift from um, Celine, who many of you will probably know from Instagram as um, Searspell Boucle. Boucle? Oh, sorry, Celine, that was terrible. Um, she lives just outside of Strasbourg. And when I was there, we had the chance to meet up, um, which was really, really wonderful. It was so nice to meet um, sort of somebody I've been friends with on Instagram for a long time. We've done several mini skein swaps. Um, and I admired the socks that she had knit out of this yarn. And she so kindly gave me her leftovers. Um, so I think that these will be, even though the colors aren't Christmassy, it's a really soft sort of pink, lavender, and... Um, kind of a gold with cream, um, which are colors I just love. I think it's not similar to this at all, um, but it, it's the same spirit, if that makes sense. It, the colors feel the same, feel similar to me. Um, does that make sense to anybody else? Anyways, so I have this. Um, I, should, I should weigh it before I start so that I make sure that I don't... Um, I don't know how much there is. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's enough for um, maybe not the maybe not a full cuff, but I have for probably the ribbing, the heels, and the toes, um, just some plain regia four ply. Uh, this is color mod is the is the only exciting colorway name I have for you. This is color. Oh, 2070. <laughs> um, it's kind of a sort of taupey gray, which I think will be all right with this. Yeah. yeah, I think it'll be okay. I didn't have this with me when I bought this, um, but I think it'll be fine. So that's my Christmas Eve cast on plans are these. I'm also hoping, can let's see, today, I told you today is the 14th. I have one more sock to go for the second pair. And I'm hoping that I can knit a third pair from this Baby Smiles, which is blue. Um, just a bunch of different blues. Anyways, um, I'm hoping that I can get one more. Three pairs of socks should be totally doable for a Christmas present. Um, this is, is really soft. Um, Yep, and I think for this third pair, assuming that I get around to it, which I'm pretty sure I will, um, now nah, I've just jinxed myself. <laughs> I've just jinxed myself completely. Um, if I get around to it, when I get around to it, um, I'm going to do a heel flap and gusset instead of the German short row heel. I just prefer it. So that's that. Those are my 
upcoming plans. The other yarn that I have to show you is yarn that I acquired in Strasbourg. Did not do any yarn shopping in Trier. There were no exciting yarn shops, sadly. Um, this is, is from Strasbourg and it's from um, La Trogerie, which I visited their Paris branch several years ago. Um, I was in Paris in early March of 2013, I took the Eurostar, I was in the UK at the time, um, and there was a sudden a snowstorm the last day that I was there. I was supposed to leave in the late evening on the Eurostar. The train was canceled. <laughs> Fortunately, I was able to get on Eurostar, put me up in a hotel, and I was able to get on the first train out in the morning. But I got to see Paris in the snow, and on that day, I went to the Paris branch of La Droguerie. And it's a really neat concept. Um, they have sort of all of their yarns, all the yarns that they sell are their own, um, their own line. And they have them all on display, all the colors, um, all the different faces, you touch them. But then, when you buy them, they sort of have a different cake or cone that they pull out and they wind the quantity that you want. So you get yarn that has not been handled by every patron um, who comes into the shop. So I bought these two colors. This is their um, Highland base, which is 100% wool. It's fingering weight. Um, oh, I think these actually these do have exciting names. Um, the orange is Bois Blonde and the maroon is i can't read upside down betterav so these are the different colors that they have i think they might have had more um but these are are some of them um and i i thought the shop in strasbourg was much cuter than the shop they also sell ribbons and buttons fabric um sort of other haberdashery type items um, I thought the shop in strasbourg was much pleasanter it was lighter um, and again, I was at the, in the Paris shop five years ago, almost five years ago. No, over five years ago. So it may have changed. Um, but anyways, I, I couldn't resist. Um, I have 100 grams of orange and 50 grams of this sort of really beautiful cranberry maroony kind of red. Um, yeah. Not certain what I'm going to do with them, but I'm thinking some color work. I think I might get some some cream um, and do a hat and some mitts. There's plenty, it's 150 grams. This is plenty for a hat and some mitts. Um, so if you have any pattern recommendations for sort of three color color work matching hat and mitts, um, do let me know. I would, be, I would be happy to have recommendations. Now, last but not least, I will tell you about a book as I always do. This is one of the books that I brought with me. I've, I've acquired books since I've been here. I'm, it's terrible. I'm going to have to figure out how to get most of them home, um, which is always a hassle. Shipping is so expensive. But that's a problem for future Robin. Uh, this is one of the books that I bought, brought with me um, from the States for the, the flight and sort of my first few weeks here. I bought it at one of my favorite Chicago bookshops. Uh, women and Children First in Andersonville, which um, highlights women authors, authors of color, queer authors, um, and children's books, which I think is like just a wonderful, they've been in business since like the 70s, um, and it's a really, really wonderful bookshop. If you're ever in Chicago, ever on the north side, um, and, and have the chance, I highly recommend Women and Children First. Um, so I bought this there. It's autographed. They must have had um, Frederick Bachman come and talk. I, I just bought it. Um, it was on the shelf. I did not actually see him. But this is Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. Um, and it's translated from the Swedish. Um, he's a Swedish author. You might know, um, he's, I think he's most famous for a man called Ove, uh, but has written several, several novels. So, a tiny community deep in the forest, Beartown hasn't been the best at anything in a long time. 
But down by the lake stands an old ice rink, and in that ice rink, Kevin, Amat, Benji, and the rest of the town's junior ice hockey team are about to compete in the national semifinals, and they actually have a shot at winning. All the hopes and dreams of this place now rest on the shoulders of a handful of teenage boys. Under that heavy burden, the semifinal match becomes the catalyst for a violent act that will leave a young girl traumatized and the town in turmoil. This is a story about a town and a game, but even more about loyalty, commitment, and the responsibility of the friendship. The people we disappoint even though we love them, and the decisions we make every day that come to define us. In this story of a small forest town, Frederick Bachman has found the entire world. This is a book, I, I picked it up and put it down several times, several different bookstore outings, sort of thought, mm, this sounds really good, but do I really want to read 400 pages about hockey? Um, and so I finally decided to buy it, and I'm so glad I did. Um, if you've read any Scandinavian novel, and there are so many Scandinavian mysteries um, these days that have been translated that are wonderful, um, you'll know that sort of, it's a really spare, and simple writing style, um, which in this case, I think really allows the characters to shine. And there is a whole cast of, of really well-drawn characters. Um, and for all the simplicity of the language, it's not a simple story. Um, it's a really completely kind of engrossing um, world. Um, and I really, I, I really recommend it, even if you're not, um, even if you're not interested in hockey or don't think you'll enjoy a book about sports. Um, I really, I just really, I, I took a long time to read it because I wanted it to last. I didn't want to finish it, but I've learned there's a sequel. <laughs> um, so it's not out of paperback yet, so I probably won't buy it until it is. Um, but yes. Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. Highly recommended. So I think on that note, my voice is starting to get croaky. Um, <clears throat> I, don't, I hope you can't hear it, but I can, I can feel it getting tired. Um, I have some other things I need to do this afternoon. So I think I'm going to let you go. But to all of those, all those of you who celebrate Christmas, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Um, with family or friends or you know whomever whomever you spend the holidays with um, for those of you who celebrate Hanukkah um, it's it's just finished so happy slightly belated Hanukkah um, for those of you who don't celebrate either of those holidays this is the last time that I will come to you in 2018 um, I'm sure so I will wish you all of the very best for the year ahead and for everybody, <laughs> not just those of you who don't celebrate Hanukkah or Christmas, um, to everybody. Um, best wishes for all good things in 2019. I hope it's a good year for everybody. Um, it's hard to believe that 2018 is almost over. It's been, I don't know about you, it's, it's been a wild, wild year. Um, lots of changes for me, lots of, sort of well, I'm, I'm in Germany, that's a big change. Um, I'll be here until July of next year, July of 2019. Um, so yeah, yeah, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year, um, and I will hopefully see you soon enough in 2019. All right, that's it for me. Bye.